Hi, in this video we are going to see about the phases and regulation of gastric secretion. So what are the phases of gastric secretion or what is the time or what are the different stages at which the gastric juice is secreted from the gastric glands. So first of all we have got the cephalic phase, the gastric phase as well as the intestinal phase. So we will see each one by one. First is the cephalic phase. See as soon as we see or get the smell of a food that is salivation or as well as there is a release of gastric secretions. So that is called the cephalic phase that is even before we eat the food. So it is initiated by, initiated by thought, sight as well as smell of food and about 20% of the total gastric acid secretion is during the cephalic phase. It is mediated by the nerve that is the vagus nerve. So see how, how does vagus nerve initiate the cephalic phase? See whenever we have got the sight or smell of food, what happens is our dorsal vagal complex is being activated. This in turn will send down its in, uh, impulses via the vagus nerve which will stimulate the stomach to produce increased gastric secretion that is increased H plus, increased pepsinogen as well as increased gastric. So see here the main hero is our vagus or the main reason for cephalic phase is our vagus nerve which is being activated by the dorsal vagal complex. Okay, so that is the cephalic phase. Next is the gastric phase. So in this case we have eaten the food. So the food is in the stomach. So now there will be release of gastric secretion. So once the food is eaten it reaches the stomach and gastric juice secretion occurs. So this is initiated partly by gastric distension. See when there is food inside the stomach, there is distension of the stomach. So that will, that is one cause and, and also partly by protein breakdown products. Okay. So we will explain how it happens. See around 70% of the total acid secretion is due to this gastric phase which means majority of the gastric acid secretion occurs when the food is inside the stomach. And it is mediated partly by vagus and partly by gastric. So see, when we eat the food, what happens is, as we said before, there is distension of the stomach. So this again, this will cause activation of the vagus nerve, which will send out, send out its impulses through to the brain and thereby there will be activation of the vagus, which again causes release of increased gastric secretion, that is H plus, pepsinogen and gastrin. Okay. Moreover, see, we, when we have food, digestion is taking place due to the action of pepsin right so proteins will be converted to peptides now these peptides will in turn stimulate the hormone gastrin which in turn will increase H plus as well as pepsinogen so see here that is why we said it is mediated partly by vagus and partly by gastrin and here also we said it is initiated partly by gastric distension gastric distension will cause uh, activation of vagus and protein breakdown products will cause activation of gastric. So this is how the gastric phase takes place. Now the third one is the intestinal phase. So during the intestinal phase the food is in the small intestine right but even then there will be a slight gastric secretion. So this is mediated by gastrin as well as another hormone that is enterooxidant and about 10% of the total acid secretion is due during the intestinal phase. Okay, So we will see how this happens. So here again, see first due to the distension of the duodenum, when the acidic chyme reaches the duodenum, there will be distension of the duodenal wall. Because of that again there is a slight activity of the vagus nerve which in turn will cause increase of acid secretion. Not only that, due to the pro digestive, digestive products of protein that is peptides, we have got release of hormones like gastrin as well as enterooxidantin and this again will cause increase in acid secretion. So but one thing we have to remember is even though in the initial part of the intestinal phase is stimulatory to gastric secretion, the later part is inhibitory. So initially there will be an increase in, as, in the gastric secretion but later on what will happen is the acidic chyme will also activate another hormone which is called the secretin. Okay? And this will inhibit the gastric secretion. So see in intestinal phase initially it will be stimulatory but later on it will be inhibitory. So to summarize the phases of gastric secretion include cephalic phase which is due to uh, the activation of the dorsal vagal complex which acts via vagus to increase the acid secretion. 
Next is the gastric phase which occurs because the, there is distension of the stomach which will again activate the vagus nerve. Moreover, the digestion protein, products of protein digestion which are peptides will activate gastrin to produce increased acid secretion. And finally, the intestinal phase. Initially, we have got uh, activation because of the distension of the duodenum as well as due to gastrin and other hormones like enterooxidin. But later on, due to release of secretin, there is inhibition of gastric secretion. So, that will complete the phases of gastric secretion. Next, we will move on to the regulation of gastric acid secretion. So, we have got stimulators for secretion as well as inhibitors. So, the stimulators can be divided into neural as well as hormonal. Neural mainly being the vagus nerve and the hormonal stimulators of secretion are histamine and gastrin. Next, we will see about the inhibitors of secretion. So, the inhibitors of secretion are mainly chemical which include the pH as well as hormonal which includes the hormone somatostatin. So, we will see how these acts. First of all, we will discuss about the neural regulation or how vagus will act on the parietal cells to increase gaseous acid secretion. So, see here you can see this is the uh, oxyntic glands of the stomach or the tubular glands of the stomach and we have got the parietal cell which secretes the H plus, we have got the chief cells which secrete pepsinogen, we have got the enterochromaffin like cell which secrete histamine. And remember, we said there are two types of tubular glands in the stomach. One is in the oxyntic, oxyntic glands and other we've got the pyloric glands. So, in the fundus, we've got these oxyntic glands, but we've got pyloric glands in the antrum too, right? And there in the antrum, we've got G cells which secrete gastrin and we also have D cells which secrete somatostatin. So, these are the glands of the stomach and the cells that produce different hormones. So, when the vagus nerve gets stimulated, what happens? It will release a neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Okay? So, this acetylcholine will act on all the three cells that is on the parietal cell, the chief cells as well as the enterochromaffin like cell. So, on the parietal cell, they act on the M3 receptors which in turn cause an increase in H plus secretion. But it also acts on the chief cells as well as the enterochromaffin like cells. So, because due to the action of all this, there will be increased secretion of H+. Due to action on chief cells, there will be increased secretion of pepsinogen. And due to action on the ECL cells, there will be increased production of histamine, which in turn will stimulate chief cells as well as the parietal cells. So, thereby there will be an increase in H+, pepsinogen as well as histamine. Okay. Now, there's a there's another action for vagus also. So, this what we just discussed was the direct action of vagus. Now, there is an indirect action also. So, we will see what that indirect action is. See, the vagus nerve will act on the G cells, but here the neurotransmitter is GRP that is gastrin releasing peptide. So, here through another neurotransmitter, it stimulates the G cells to produce increased gastrin. So, this gastrin will then move through the circulation because it is a hormone it will move through the circulation and reaches these cells and stimulate the enterochromaffin like cells to produce more histamine the chief cells to produce more pepsinogen as well as the parietal cells to produce more H plus. So see gastrin has got multiple roles to increase gastric secretion. So this is how vagus nerve will act to produce increased gastric secretion. Clear? So, there are two, two ways. One is a direct way as well as the indirect way. Right? So, stimulation of vagus nerve causes the release of transmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine acts via the muscarinic receptors that is M3 receptors on the parietal cell to increase gastric secretion and also acts indirectly by secreting gastrin from the G cells via the GRP that in turn stimulate the parietal cells. So, this is how vagus nerve acts on the gastric secretion. So, next we will see about the hormonal regulation. So, the important hormone that increases gastric secretion is gastrin. So, we know that gastrin is produced from the G cells that are located at the pylorus of the stomach. Okay. So, here the pyloric glands have G cells that secrete gastrin. 
and the gastrin is carried by a blood stream to the parietal cell and it stimulates the gastric secretion which we have just mentioned okay so that is how gastrin increases gastric secretion the next hormone that increases gastric acid secretion is the histamine so histamine has got a paracrine regulation why paracrine because see histamine will act on cells that are near to it so that is why it is called a paracrine regulation so the enterochromaffin like cells are located in the stomach wall and they secrete histamine histamine then reaches the parietal cells and act via h2 receptors to stimulate the gastric acid secretion right so that would complete our stimulators of gastric secretion next we'll move on to the inhibitors so the main inhibitor of gastric acid secretion is the ph okay so ph is very important factor that inhibits the gastric secretion so this is called the auto regulation of acid secretion so if the ph falls less than 3 our stomach automatically have mechanisms that will decrease the acid secretion so it uh, the mechanism is it directly inhibits the gastrin secretion from g cells and also stimulates somatostatin secretion from the d cells okay so it will switch off the gastrin which was increasing gastric secretion and it will on the inhibitor that is somatostatin so that is the auto regulation of acid secretion so now we'll see how the hormone somatostatin acts on the gastric secretion so see we know that somatostatin is an inhibitor so how it acts is see the d cells or the delta cells present in the pyloric glands will secrete somatostatin and that will in turn inhibit the gastrin gastrin cells that is the g cells so there will be decreased gastrin as well as decreased uh, stimulation or the pr production of gastric acid so that is how somatostatin acts so see it is somatostatin is secreted from the d cells of the gastric mucosa the decreased ph of gastric content increases secretion of somatostatin which in turn inhibits the gastrin release and since gastrin is the most potent stimulator of acid secretion a decreased gastrin release decreases hcl secretion from the stomach so that is how somatostatin acts on the gastric secretion and decreases it now for some ed scoring points you can also mention the mechanism of action of the, these hormones so for example if this is a parietal cell so the first mediator we talked about is vagus which will release acetylcholine right so how does acetylcholine increases uh, acid secretion from the parietal cell so acetylcholine actually acts on the receptor which we've al already mentioned which is the muscarinic receptor m3 receptor this in turn will cause increased influx of calcium so when there is increased influx of calcium this calcium will act like a second messenger which will in turn activate many other protein kinases and in turn increases the activity of the h plus k plus atpase pump which is responsible for the acid production okay so this is a very simplified cycle but i think this will uh, bring out the point so m3 receptor will cause increased release of calcium which in turn will activate h plus k plus atpase right now the next hormone we talked about was gastrin so gastrin will act on the receptor called cck2 see remember the uh, the name is quite different it is cck2 and it will act via the ip3 so here the second messenger is ip3 which again acts on uh, which will again increase the calcium level and cause increase in h plus k plus atpase pump now the third mediator we talked about was histamine so histamine will act on h2 receptors and here the second mediator secondary messenger camp so here camp will increase the protein kinases which will in turn act to increase the activity of h plus k plus atpase pump okay so i uh, as an additional scoring point you can also you know go into depths of the mechanism of action of each of these mediators so in a nutshell to summarize we talked about the regulation of acid secretion in which we talked about stimulators as well as inhibitors the stimulators are mainly neural and hormonal so the neural is mainly the vagus nerve and we talked about the mechanism of action how it acts on the three different cells and how it has two different actions one is direct as well as indirect then we talked about the hormones that is histamine as well as gastrin 
we then talked about the inhibitors of secretion which is mainly chemical that is the ph which causes auto regulation as well as stomatostatin which acts to decrease the gastrin secretion so i hope this concept is clear thank you